<laughs> well, if Montana people, uh, I wonder, think you're a bit of a city slicker now, uh, Mr. Huntley, when you go out there? You've been in the big city so long. And I don't think so. Yeah. No. <laughs> they, they've known me too long. How long did you live there before you came east? Uh, 20, 21 years or so. When I went away from my last year in college. Can you remember your first salary in, in radio, in the medium? Yes. $10 a month in my apartment. <laughs> a month? A month. You must have been terribly frugal. How do you make ends meet on $10 a month? It was difficult, but you did have some sort of a license. You could go out and make a deal with a, you know, a nice Greek restaurateur, and I'll give you a six-spot announcement for a week. <laughs> you <laughs> traded. Oh, sure. Traded things. It's the only way you could exist. Yeah. What did your mother and father want you to be? Oh, I think my mother want, wanted me to be a minister. And uh, my dad, uh, just a good trout fisherman. <laughs> that was his, was that his or, passion? Um, or like him, like him, a good railroad telegrapher, I think. <laughs> right. You know, you will, your leaving will unbalance the news world in, in one sense because you're known to be conservative on some things that your colleagues are, are not. Well, what are some of those? Well, you mean these labels yeah. that get thrown yeah. around. They're unfortunate because I look at myself and I don't know what I am in terms of uh, conservative and, and liberal. Mm -hmm. I suppose economically I'm, a, I'm an arch-conservative. My attitude's toward the federal government, the federal structure. Uh, I'm disenchanted like so many other Americans with that. It's getting too big and cumbersome and unmanageable filled with self-serving and self-perpetuating bureaucracy and accomplishes too little for our money. In terms of humanity, in terms of human beings and the racial issue, I suppose I'm a screaming liberal. Um, in terms of conservation of our natural resources, now here we get into the ultimate confusion. Conservation, conservatism, coming from the same root word. What are you if you, if you're, uh, if you believe in the conservation of our natural resources. Are you liberal or conservative? I don't know. So we, we get into terrible confusion here with these words. somebody to look at it and comment on it and, and bring it to people's attention instead of just let somebody tell them what's happening and go to sleep. You know what I mean? Like Agnew saying, you guys ought to shut up and let us do our thing. Well, I mean, somebody needs to, needs to listen to Agnew and say, I think he said this and this, but I think he means this and this. I mean, we need, I think we need people to listen to these people, you know, because not many, and nobody else is. <laughs> we will all lower our voices and return from this uh, station break after this. Oh, here we all are again. What an interesting group we are. Janis Joplin, Douglas Fairbanks Jr., Chet Huntley. I know, I know, I know, I know it, I know it, I know it. Raquel, Raquel Welch, yes, of course. Raquel is the name. A queer law, C-H. <laughs> that's a thrilling thing Maybe to know that your law, name can be rearranged, isn't it? <laughs> to, to know that your name can be rearranged is really an exciting thing. Terrific, Dick. You said something under your breath just then that made Janice laugh and I missed it. I, I said it may be a law, but it's not queer, C-H. Oh. <laughs> Uh, we can go on like this for quite, quite, quite a while. Terrible. What were we speaking of before? Oh, Mr. Hunt, let me ask you this as you're leaving the news scene. What, what was the last time you um, let your opinion show uh, in a newscast? Uh, maybe I'm asking a bad question, but I, I'm interested in that area of when you sit and read something that moves you one way or another, a uh, piece of news, uh, and you feel strongly about it. Um, <clears throat> oh, blatantly, it a, I suppose. Maybe the night Martin Luther King was assassinated. Uh, where you just felt, oh, we've just had it, and this is unbearable. Mm -hmm. uh, I think, fortunately, what, what my opinion was was not too different from the opinion of most of my fellow Americans. But most of the time, I think we, particularly in broadcast journalism, are professional enough that we don't let our private opinions run away with us and go unbridled, because our private opinions are really not that valid most of the time. Uh, they might be by some strange accident, but that's not, that's not what we're there for. We're out there broadcast, that wonderful word, broadcast. Throw ideas out to the wind. Some of them may germinate, some may not. 
but uh, let them all let them all go out there. And the public, I think, in its eternal long-range wisdom, you, she's shaking her head, will choose between the good ones and the bad ones. You do have faith in the public sifting them out and getting the good you ones. Have job, you have a job as an artist, an artist to uh, interpret these facts. I mean, there's no such thing as a fact. It has, it's many faceted. And your job as a journalist is to tell the truth as you see it. Oh, indeed. Right. You know. But I, you can't demand of the public that they accept every word of mine as gospel. They must have that right to pick and choose. Yeah. Do with those ideas what they will. Reject, accept, or, or whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, may I? Yes. 